what's going on guys? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number 10, an introduction to Pro Tools, part number two. Now, like I said in the other video, I really don't want to take up too much of the you know screen real estate there. I want you to see the program for what it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and slowly disappear. I know that you guys went ahead and you guys started learning some things about Pro Tools and its history and all that sort of stuff. But what I want to do is I also want to get you prepared for using Pro Tools. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some uh, things that you need to know right away. So let's go ahead and begin by firing up Pro Tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the previous um, session that we made last time. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, with Session Basics, let's go ahead and hit OK. Boom, and so it brought it up. Uh, I have my transport window already up. If you don't, you can always hit Command 1 or you can go to the Windows area, hit Transport. Uh, we're going to need that in a little bit. Uh, but first things first, let's go ahead and make sure that we have our setup done right so that we could actually begin recording. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Setup. It's right here. Boom, Setup. And I'm going to go to where it says Playback Engine. And I'm just going to make sure that my Mbox Mini is, in fact, selected. So here it is, Avid Mbox Mini. It is selected. Now, if yours isn't selected, just go over to this menu and then just make sure that you select it over to Avid Mbox Mini. I'm going to go ahead and hit this just in case uh, you haven't and you know, you're afraid to hit it or something like that because it'll give you this prompt that you're going to need to see. And it's going to say, selecting this playback engine will automatically save and close your session, but it'll reopen with this uh, changed. Uh, so then you want to go ahead and hit yes, hit OK over here, and it'll just bring it back in like, you know, a second. And now it's selected, so we'll go over to hardware, just make sure that our hardware, which is our Mbox Mini, is indeed selected, which it is. There it is. Hit OK, but we're not done setting up just yet. Hit set up again. Go to ins and outs, or I.O., and we're just going to make sure that everything is on default on this uh, Mbox Mini. Okay, so if it isn't, actually let's start with input. Just go to default, click that, and just make sure that it looks like this now. Do the same for output, even for bus as well. And this actually might look different. You just want to go ahead and hit default, insert, default. Mic preamps is not going to give you any options. So you just move over to the next one, which is going to be your hardware insert delay. And if it doesn't look like this, just hit default, hit OK, and now you should be ready to begin recording. But not just yet, because you still need to arm your tracks and do a, a couple other small things before you hit record. All right, cool. So previously, I made this uh, empty track for my synth bass. Uh, I'm going to be using a synthesizer and uh, record something. So let's say I'm ready to record. I hit record, I'll probably get some sound, but if I hit play and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be ready to record now, it actually will not allow, allow me to record anything. So I'm hitting my keyboard right now, look, uh, but nothing. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you have your transport bar open, you hit the record button, and you're, re you're recorded enabled, and then you could begin recording at that point. Now. Just in case, I just want to go over this one more time really quickly. I know I mentioned this in a previous video, but I want you to go ahead and make sure that you select this right here, and that you could actually see your inserts and your ins and outs nice and clear. Uh, make sure that everything is selected in the right uh, place. We created some uh, mono tracks. You want to go ahead and check your output as well. Make sure that you could hear it coming out of your headphones or your, or your monitors. And same for the master as well. Make sure that's ready. Okay, now we're pretty much ready to record. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play and begin recording. Before I actually record, you'll hear two measures of just the metronome, and then I'll start. Okay, so that sounded fine. Um, I'll go ahead and hit return, bring the playhead back to the beginning, and hit play. Okay, cool. 
So, that's pretty much my uh, first recording for you guys. Now, of course, you know, hopefully we're following along. You had a guitar connected or, uh, you know, even a microphone and you just said, hello, hello, hello. Uh, as long as you did something like that, uh, you'll know that that's how you indeed record. Okay? Now, there's a, another feature on the transport which I forgot to mention the last time. And this is going to be like a looping function. Uh, it's very, very useful. It's right here at the play button. So all you need to do is hit control, hit the play button, and now you have this cool little looping function. But there's nothing selected, so it's not going to loop anything. Let's see, if I, if I play, it didn't loop anything. So um, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and use your selector tool right here. Select an audio region. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and select from the beginning. Actually, let's do this all the way from the beginning. Right there. And now I'm going to hit play, and it should just loop the same thing over and over. Okay, so I did it. Um, so that's the looping function. I forgot to mention that. And over here you have the Gen MTC, and this is actually it kind of partners up with this one here online uh, to go ahead and just make sure that your MIDI clock is actually set. I forgot to mention that from before. Uh, I also want to go over the transport button just a little bit more and talk to you about some other features that are available. Right here you have this little conductor, uh, the conductor track. This is really for MIDI, uh, but if you have it selected or not selected, what I want you to do is just make sure that it's no longer blue and you see that this is green right here. And uh, I want to also let you know that you have an option to create a tempo by punching it in yourself, you know? So if you kind of have a thought in your in your head and you're like, okay, I want to go ahead and record the song, but I don't know what tempo it is, it kind of goes like, like, doom, 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 ka. Doom, doom, doom. I'm just a bad rendition of what a metronome sounds like. You could actually punch it in by having this in, in a green, clicking the little uh, area right there for the number, and then hitting the T button. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Actually, you probably couldn't see that. It did change from 120 to 162. Let me go ahead and redo that again. So you could just pretty much change it to whatever you want by uh, clicking it or tapping tapping the tempo on. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at BPM 120. Hit enter. That looks good. And also you could change the metering as well. So if you're on a 4-4, that's fine. That works for you. Um, you could leave it as is or you could just double click that and then it gives you options to change that You know, for wherever you're, wherever you're at. Now right now it's giving me a suggestion to change it uh, from location three, uh, actually, actually that's going to be B3, uh, measure two, and then I guess hundred. I mean 818 ticks, uh, but I don't want to do anything, I don't want to change the metering, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at, as is, but I could always change it to 3-4 or 2-4 or whatever I want to do, okay? So cool. Let's see, uh, a few more tools that you should know about, I'm going to go, go ahead and go over the smart tool. Okay, so individually, these are the, this is going to be your, your trim tool, this is going to be your selector tool, and this is going to be your grabber tool. Now your trim tool will allow you to go ahead and, you see this bracket here, just go ahead and trim anything. You can trim it down to, to that if you wanted. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z to bring that back to where it was. Um, the, I'm sorry, uh, this tool right here, this is going to be your selection tool, right? Yeah, selector tool. What you're going to go ahead and use this for is to go ahead and select a region, and let's say if I wanted to delete that, I would just delete it like that. Uh, but I want to keep that, so that's fine. And you got your grabber tool. If you want to go ahead and move the region around to wherever you want it to, you could also do that as well. Now, if you want to have all three of these tools selected at the same time, all you want to do is hit the escape button a few times or in this case just once since I had it on the grabber tool last and then you could have all three functions available so let's say if I wanted to trim something and then delete it or do anything like that I'd actually be able to do that uh, with pretty much no problems whatsoever so it's actually it's very very handy so if I wanted to let's say for example move it over here and then I want to trim it down 
and then I wanted to go ahead and select like as whoops I got the other tool selected still and I just want to go ahead and select this part and delete that and I'd be able to do all that by using a smart tool. Alright then guys, those are all the Pro Tools features I'm going to be sharing with you for this week, but don't worry, plenty more videos to come. Now if you have any downtime, don't forget to check out Music is My Oxygen for all the things that you care about in the world of music. And until then, don't forget to have fun, study hard, keep your eyes on your goals, and I'll catch you guys next week.